Blessed is our God, Trinity of love, and blessed is the dominion of our God, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Welcome to you all. It's very good to have you with us for our um, epic Christmas nativity uh, liturgy. We, I hope you have all been not saying anything for the entire day and resting your voices so that you are still able to sing carols all the way to the end of the service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We come to worship the God made known to us in the fragile promise of a newborn child. May God gather us from the four corners of the earth, uniting us as one body in Christ as we lift our voices in praise.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light that the darkness can extinguish. As the light of the world bursts forth in our midst with the promise of hope, peace, joy, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Joining our voices with the deep groans of creation and with the cries of lament that rise from a world in travail, aching for redemption, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. With the traditional custodians of this land, the Binurong people and the and the Wurundjeri people, and those in the land of Palestine, with all who cry out for reconciliation and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. <laughs> Kukriyako sansar ko gao haru sahana ra niku huna ra nayakara huna chaan cha prabhu le prathana garam. Oh holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. With all who find no place of welcome, those forced to flee the threat of violence, those ignored, shunned and pushed aside. With all who need shelter and long for home, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. With each one gathered here in prayer, with our absent sisters and brothers, and with the whole of Christ Church in all the world, all who celebrate with the angels and labour to deliver God's peace on the earth, let us pray to the Lord. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. With what people, with what Mama and Papa them, with people who are in sickness or press, People when no fit protect themselves from big gay. When no say they need people, make we pray for them. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. With Holy Mary, the God-bearer, with Joseph of Nazareth, and with all who hold newborn babies with wonder and holy fear, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. With the shepherds of Judea who worshipped, with the Magi who brought gifts, with Simeon and Anna who recognised the child as the one for whom all the world hopes, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. And with the faithful ones whose names we call on now. Ray Sprig. With these and the whole cloud of witnesses, all who rest in peace, having seen your salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is the holy child of Bethlehem, the word made flesh in our midst. 
you come to us in everything you have created, in seas and stars, in rock and river. But tonight we celebrate the gift of yourself given to us in a fragile baby, gurgling, crying, laid in a manger, share of our flesh and blood. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. him. Christ the Lord. Send your Holy Spirit among us that we might follow the star of your hope, reflect the bright, beams of your grace and truth and offer our gifts whenever we find your son. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. him. Christ the Lord. Shine your light on us like the blazing sun, withering all that is trivial and false, forcing our roots deeper into your mercy and driving us to seek rest and replenishment in the cool oceans of Christ's love. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Revealed for the salvation of all people, instructing us to live self controlled, honest, and godly lives in this world. Our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us to rescue us from all corruption and to make us a pure people who belong to him alone and are eager to do good. O Chineke, in your chawani, Mara Utoaidi, in my hini le basarai, and your kupu tawuna, and in no nime mehe. Jiru be a very good wine, Mazopo Taquine. When we make no room for Christ and fail to welcome Him into our lives. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we seek to cut down those who might rise above us. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we sanitize your birthplace and erase from memory the poor and displaced. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we sing sweet sentiments over Christ's birth and fail to rejoice over his everyday presence. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Nos volvemos hacia ti, oh Dios de misericordia infinita. We renounce evil, we claim your love, we choose to be made whole. The kindness and love of God our Saviour has been revealed, and he has saved us according to his mercy. Having been justified by his grace, we are now made heirs with Christ in the hope of eternal life. 
Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, and on the earth peace. For God comes to us with mercy and love. Hosanna in the highest, and on the earth peace. Sisters and brothers, the word of God became flesh, fruit of a woman's womb, that we might see him with our own eyes and touch him with our own hands. Therefore, let us have wisdom. Let us take heed. Let us not flee the word that comes to save us. Lord, to whom shall we go? Yours are the words of eternal life.神啊，你的奥妙，通过世世代代的人们用智慧显明，刻在神圣之处，记录在圣书里。Through the prophet Isaiah comes the promise of salvation. Let us listen for the word of God. Jerusalem, I have sent the town criers up onto the wall. I have told them to shout about day and night, to let anyone sh and not let anyone shut them up. Their job is to shout and chant without a break, to keep up the pressure until the Lord puts Jerusalem back on her feet and makes her the toast of all the earth. I have given my word, says the Lord, and you can count on it. Never again will I let your enemies in to plunder the food and wine you have put so much work into. From now on, everyone will enjoy the fruits of their own labour. Those who bake the bread will eat with thankful hearts. Those who pick the grapes will enjoy the wine in my temple. People of Jerusalem, throw open your gates. Get everything ready for the homecomers. Resurface the road. Fill the potholes. Clear the stones. Put up signs to show everyone the way. The Lord has an announcement to make, and that all the earth will hear it. I am coming soon to save you, Jerusalem, and I will bring a reward to make up for all you have suffered. You will be known as people dedicated to me, as the people I have reclaimed and brought home. You will be called the place to be, the city no one wants to leave. Hear the word of God. We have heard the sound. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Through the prophet Isaiah comes the promise of a new king to a people in desperate need of good news. Let us listen for the word of God. The people who lived in a dark cloud of gloom have seen a great light break through. Those in the blackest hell holes have seen the whole world light up. Lord, you have built up the nation and given them every reason to celebrate. The people revel in it all, like farmers when a drought breaks, like children opening presents. Finally, they are out from under the thumb of those who oppress them. You have broken their chains and run the slave drivers out of town. There will be a huge bonfire to burn everything left by the occupation forces. Their bloodstained uniforms and cruel boots will all go up in flames. For see, a child has been born for us, the gift of a son who will take charge of everything. He will be given all these titles, most excellent advisor, supreme God, father forever, prince of peace. His sphere of influence will just keep expanding and his realm will know peace without limit. Inheriting all that David ruled, he will bring stability and security, doing what is just and right, will be the hallmarks of his reign from now on and for all time. The Lord's heart is set on this. The Lord who rules over everything will see that it happens. Hear the word of God. We have heard to the silent. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who would think that what was needed to transform and save the earth might not be a man or a Through the prophet Isaiah comes the vision of the arrival of God's salvation. Let us listen for the word of God. Talk about a sight for sore eyes. Here comes the messenger, galloping down the mountain, bringing the news. 
that God's people have been hanging out for. You are saved. God is control. Finally, there will be peace. So now it's time to celebrate like crazy. Those of you who have stood tense and silent on a lookout can let your hair down and sing and dance. Fearing the worst, you saw the best. The Lord returning home to reclaim the city. You whose streets and homes are, were reduced to rubble can raise your glasses and sing together. For the Lord has put an arm around your shoulders, reclaimed your streets and begun building. In the full view of every nation, the Lord has brandished a hard fist, ready to deal with the would-be oppressors. Now is a time for the whole earth to see the freedom of God's promised, the freedom God promised, the peace we long for. Hear the word of God. We have heard the silence. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the letter to the Hebrews, we hear of the unique role of Jesus the Christ. Let us listen for the word of God. Down through the years, God has spoken to our ancestors through the prophets in all sorts of different ways. Lately, though, at long last, God has sent a son to speak to us directly. It was through this son that God created the world in the first place, and it will all belong to him in the end. You can see all the glory of God mirrored in this son. God's essential nature is imprinted on him perfectly. Everything in the universe holds together at his say-so. The son took action to bring about the forgiveness of sins, and having done that, he was given the most honoured seat in heaven as God's right-hand man. He had proven himself to be in a league above the angels, and the title he was granted made this clear. Hear the word of God. We have heard the silent.
for the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel according to Luke, we hear the announcement of Jesus' imminent birth. Let us listen for the word of God. God sent the angel Gabriel into the region of Galilee to a town called Nazareth to speak to a young woman named Mary. Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, whose family line went back to King David. The angel approached Mary and said, hello there. You've got it made. The Lord is with you and has chosen you. But Mary was freaking out about this and didn't know what to make of the angel's words. So he spoke to her again, saying, There is no need to be frightened, Mary. God is smiling on you. Look what God is about to do. A child will be conceived in your womb. You will give birth to a baby boy and you will name him Jesus. He will have a great future and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will put him on the throne, established by his ancestor David. He will reign over God's people forever, and his dominion will never come to an end. Mary replied, how can this possibly happen? I'm still a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will take hold of you, and the life force of the Most High will enfold you. Therefore, The child to be born will belong to God and will be called God's son. Check it out. Your wrinkly old relative, Elizabeth, is also carrying a baby boy in her womb. Even when she was young, she was infertile, but now she is six months pregnant. It just goes to show when God gets involved, nothing will ever be impossible. So Mary said, okay, count me in. I'm at the service of the Lord. Let these things happen to me just as you have said. And with that, the angel was gone. Hear the word of God. We have heard the
for the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel according to St. Luke, we hear of the birth of Jesus. Let us listen for the word of God. Many years ago, the Roman Emperor Augustus gave orders for a census to be conducted throughout the whole empire. This was the first time it had been done while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Every man was required to go and register himself and his family in the town where he had been born. For Joseph, this meant traveling all the way from Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem in Judea. Bethlehem had been the hometown of King David and Joseph being a descendant of David had been born there too. So that was where he had to report. Joseph's fiance, Mary, traveled with him to Bethlehem for the census. She was pregnant and the baby was due any day. There was no accommodation left anywhere 
in the town, so they ended up camping out in the stables behind a pub. Sure enough, she went into labour while they were there and gave birth to her first child, a baby boy. Mary wrapped the baby in a bunny rug and made up a bed for him in a feed trough. Hear the word of God. We have heard the silent. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel according to St. Luke, we hear how news of the birth of Jesus spread. Let us listen for the word of God. The region around Bethlehem was sheep country, and that night there was a bunch of shearers spinning yarns around their campfire. Suddenly the whole sky lit up with the glory of God, and the Lord's messenger stood among them. They were packing death, but the messenger said to them, It's okay, there's no need to panic. I'm here with good news, news that will give everyone everywhere good reason to celebrate. A saviour has just been born in David's town. He is God's chosen one, the Lord of all. Go and see for yourselves. You'll know you found him when you see a baby wrapped in a bunny rug and lying in a feed trough. The second he'd finished speaking, the messenger was joined by a whole crowd from heaven all praising God and shouting at the tops of their voices, saying, All the glory belongs to God in heaven, and let there be peace on earth for all God's people. Then it was all over. The crowd went back to heaven, and the shearers were left sitting there looking at one another, gobsmacked. We'd better go and check this out, they said. Let's go into town and see if we can see what's happened, what the Lord has led us in on. So without messing around, they headed straight into Bethlehem. And sure enough, they tracked down Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the feed trough. When they saw all this, they began telling everyone what they had heard about this child. People could hardly believe their ears when they heard what the shearers were saying. But their words were precious to Mary 
and she repeated them over and over in her mind, wondering what would become of it all. The shearers headed off towards their camp again, a rowdy mob singing and shouting in the streets about how fabulous God was because of everything they had seen and heard. Everything had been just the way they had been told it would be. Hear the word of God. We have heard the For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we have Paul's letter to Titus, where we hear how the arrival of Jesus enables us to be baptised into the life of salvation. Let us listen for the word of God. When God, our Saviour, showed up, overflowing with goodness, love and kindness, we were rescued from the horrors of our past. God saved us for no other reason than because God wanted to. We had never done anything to deserve it. It only happened because God's mercy is so extravagant. The Holy Spirit stepped in and took us down into the healing waters. We came out thoroughly rejuvenated, like newborn babies with a fresh start before us. Through our contact with Jesus Christ, our Saviour, God has poured out the Holy Spirit on us like a rich oil that soaks into every pore. So now, having been given a clean slate through God's extravagant generosity, we are marked out to receive the full inheritance, the life without limit that everyone has been longing for. Hear the word of God. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Listen now to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Walk so fast before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door. The earth is blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the 
Let us arise and rejoice in you, O Virgin Mary. The seed of the gospel has flowered. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. You have borne the word made flesh, the Saviour of our souls. Gloria, 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 Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the very start, there was one who is called the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From day one, God and the Word were inseparable. It was through the Word that everything was created. There is absolutely nothing that doesn't owe its existence to him. In the word was life. He is the source of the life that turns on the lights for everyone. The light of his life breaks open the darkness and the darkness could not snuff it out. Once there was a man on a mission from God, his name was John. John gave a first-hand report about the light, spelling it out so that everyone could believe. He wasn't the light himself, but he made it his job to draw everyone's attention to the light. The real light was on his way into the world, the light that lights up inside of everyone. He was in the world, but the world didn't even notice him, even though it owed its existence to him. He turned up on his own planet among those he created, but his own people turned their backs on him. Some people accepted him, though, and put their trust in who he said he was and what he said he was on about. He gave to those people all they needed to become children of God. Becoming God's children had nothing to do with sperm and egg or three-stage labour. They became God's children when they were born of God. The word, though, was born flesh and blood like everyone else. He cast in his lot with us and rolled out his swag in our midst. We have seen him in all his glory, like father, like son, warm and generous to a fault, solid and true to the core. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the world tells us that we are what we do with our spending power, let us learn. We are who we are in our silence. When the world tells us that we are how we're seen in the eyes of others, let us learn. We are who we are in our silence. When the, when the world tells us to rush in where the angels fear to tread, let us learn what the angels already know.
This time of year, there is often a story in the newspaper about the Melbourne Zoo, and it is almost inevitably accompanied by a picture of a chimp, orangutan, or gorilla opening a Christmas present. Uh, although this year it's probably baby elephants. Uh, back when she was in her early teens, Acacia was reading one of those articles a few days before Christmas and wondered out loud why the animals were getting their presents early if, as it said in the article, the zoo was going to be open on Christmas Day anyway. Perhaps the animal world has a different Christmas Day, she suggested. Now that little speculation set off a chain reaction in my head, and I ended up thinking about the possibility of God not only becoming incarnate as a human being, but perhaps also, or even instead, becoming incarnate as an orangutan or an eastern barred bandicoot, which of course could well happen on a different day. Now, such thoughts will no doubt have me in trouble again with some well-meaning Christians. They will think that such thoughts are scandalous blasphemy and unworthy of an ordained Christian pastor. Probably won't be the first time that they've thought such things about me, and they may well be right as often as not. But actually, the idea of God becoming incarnate as a spotted tree frog or an orange-bellied parrot is probably no more scandalous than the message of the incarnation of God in Jesus and the apparent scandalous blasphemy is very much the point of it all. If you've never felt any offence or discomfort over the particular details of the when, where, and who of the incarnation of God becoming flesh among us, then there's a fair chance that you've managed to miss the point altogether, which, by the way, will not leave you without plentiful company. Perhaps I can explain this by pointing to a long-running controversy in the world of religious art. Some of you will be old enough to remember the shock felt by many Christians when artworks first began to appear that depicted Jesus not as a blue-eyed, sandy-haired Anglo, but as an obviously Middle Eastern man with black hair and dark skin. People were scandalized by the implication that Jesus might not be so much one of us as one of them. After all, the incarnation is supposed to be about God becoming one of us. So too, for some time now in many parts of the world, as the era of colonialism has come to an end, and people in various places have begun to try and rethink their newfound faith in Jesus without the imposed foreign trappings of their colonial overlords. They've begun to produce artworks that depict Jesus as one of them, as a Mexican farmer or a Chinese villager or a Sudanese labourer. And we've seen a range of examples of such pictures on the slides with our carols tonight. Nativity scenes set in various cultures all over the world. Now, in many ways, these localised interpretations of Jesus are good and right and very, very important. It's absolutely vital for the health of the church in such places that they break free of the imposed imagery of the colonial powers and grasp the truth that God in Christ became one of them, 
and that who they are and where they live does not put them any further from the grace and mercy of God than anybody else, but is in fact honoured by God and dignified by God and even inhabited by God. But as much as there is something very right about such depictions, there's also something wrong with them potentially just as wrong as the old blue-eyed Anglo-Jesus pictures. Because there's a danger that when we overly identify Jesus with the particulars of our lives and our situations and our identities, that we can fall back into the subtle but common and dangerous heresy of thinking that the incarnation means that God is one of us as opposed to being one of them. And if we do that, whoever we are, then we make Jesus an accomplice in the cause of tribalism, nationalism, rivalry, and division, instead of being the bearer of good news of reconciliation and peace on earth. There's an unavoidable tension here, and it's a tension that we have to live with and avoid trying to too easily resolve one way or the other if we are to really grasp the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. For yes, the message of Christmas really does mean that God is one of us. But yes, it really does also mean that God is one of them. And this has always been and will continue to be a scandal and a stumbling block to many. We all tend to think that surely if God was choosing to become human, then God would choose to become like one of us, not one of them. And so everybody ends up getting their noses out of joint when confronted with the particularity of the when, where and who of the incarnation. Anglo-Europeans, as well as the native peoples from other parts of the globe, are offended by the proclamation that God became Middle Eastern flesh. Arabs are offended by the proclamation that God became Israeli flesh. The extreme right are offended by the proclamation that God became Jewish flesh. The upper and middle classes are offended by the proclamation that God became peasant flesh. The children of the Enlightenment are offended by the proclamation that God became flesh among people who thought the earth was flat. Feminists are offended by the proclamation that God became male flesh. LGBT people are offended by the proclamation that God became cisgendered flesh in a heterosexual family. While the traditional family values lobby are offended by the fact that Jesus may have been conceived by some form of artificial insemination that marginalized the role of the father as the head of the family. And even the straight, religiously conservative Jewish Israeli men are offended by the proclamation that God became flesh in Galilee. Can anything good come out of Galilee? And some of us are just grumpy that God allowed that person who most gets up my nose to think that the incarnation was for them just as much as it was for me. The world's usual response to all this scandalous particularity is to try and gloss it over by turning the Christmas message into something more generic and inoffensive and marketable. So baby Jesus, surrounded by his adoring parents and an odd assortment of onlookers, gets the hallmark treatment to become a universal affirmation of the importance of family. And Christmas Day almost becomes Mother's Day all over again. And the angel's song lends itself well to becoming a blandly universal and inoffensive message of peace on earth and goodwill to all. Of course, the message of Christmas absolutely is about peace on earth and goodwill to all. But when stripped of all potentially offensive particulars, it can easily become no more than the sort of blandly obvious statements that beauty pageant contestants seem to always say. Because if we get more specific than that, 
and say that peace on earth means an open-armed welcome of asylum seekers and goodwill to all means goodwill to members of the Taliban and the National Rifle Association and Scott Morrison, Vladimir Putin and George Pell, and perhaps even to renegade preachers who dare to lump all of those into the same sentence. If we say that, then it becomes particular and scandalous and we all get our noses out of joint and walk off in a huff saying, how dare they try and politicise Christmas? Some of us would indeed be more comfortable with the idea of God becoming flesh as an orangutan than the idea of God becoming flesh as a first century straight Jewish Israeli male. But there you have it. Emmanuel. God with us and God not allowing us to easily wriggle out of the fact that God with us doesn't mean God mirroring and endorsing the status quo of our current preferences and prejudices. It doesn't mean God with us especially, but it means God with them just as much. And when we have faced up to the confronting irritation of that and been won over by the extravagant grace of that, then we will truly begin to grasp the wonder of this night and be able to partner with God in making the angel's song of peace on earth and goodwill to all a reality for all the peoples of the whole world in all their diverse particularity. In fact, lest I forget the orangutan and the lead beater's possum, let me rephrase that as all the creatures of the whole world and no doubt of the earth itself. May that peace be born in us tonight, among us and among all whose hearts stir at the sound of the angel's song. We have heard the gospel proclaimed. To be able now to live it, we look to Jesus who says, all things are possible to those who believe. We believe, Lord, help our unbelief. As we declare the common faith of the church, let us sing our way onward into the life of Jesus, the life that lives and loves between the lines. We believe in God, the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, from where he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen, amen. Let us pray for all God's people everywhere and for ourselves in this congregation that the Holy Spirit may continue to open our hearts and lives to the grace and truth that we find in the Christ child. With all the earth in one accord, we pray 
Que podamos permanecer en la fe y comunión de la única Iglesia Santa, Católica y Apostólica. Let us pray for the world and all peoples everywhere, for the healing of the world's grievous wounds, the end of all wars, the eradication of poverty, corruption and bigotry, and the overcoming of fear, disease and despair. With all the earth in one accord, we pray for your mercy, O heavenly Lord. For the places torn apart by violence and the people who flee before it, seeking refuge and longing for home. With all the earth in one accord, we pray for your mercy, O heavenly Lord. For those whose lives are so crowded, crowded that they cannot no longer find room for others. With all the earth in one accord, we pray for your mercy, O heavenly Lord. For all who are wandering and searching for places to share their gifts and leave their burdens, with all the earth in one accord, we pray for your mercy, O heavenly Lord. For all who continue to work tonight, mm. watching flocks or managing machines, caring for babies or nursing the dying, for mm. all who long to be with loved ones, but whose faithful work is a gift to us all. With all the earth in one accord, we pray for your mercy, O heavenly Lord. For all those who dread this season as an unwelcome reminder of loneliness or failure. With all the earth in one Accord, we pray for your mercy, O heavenly Lord. That all whom we carry in our hearts, from around our world, around our nation, and among our loved ones, might be gathered into our prayers, let us lift up to God the names of those for whom we would especially seek God's care. Muro Perani, she make a new beer. Manana quaya, ni memo a perahu, or paragi cusirani. Our Father in heaven, how be your name? Our Father in heaven, how be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. On earth as in heaven Give us today our daily bread Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins As we forgive those who sin against us As we forgive those who sin against us Save us from the time of trial, save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever, now and
Christ was first delivered to us, needy and naked, wrapped in a woman's blood. Now he offers himself to us at this table to nurture and sustain us in fullness of life. Whosoever will may come, not because you are worthy, nor because any church gives permission, but simply because, having followed the star of hope and recognised in the Christ child the goal of all our longing, you want to offer him the gifts that you bring and the gift that you are. Come, let us prepare the Lord's table. Béni sois-tu, Seigneur, Dieu de toute la création, par ta bonté, nous sommes en communion les uns avec les autres et avec tous ceux qui espèrent en Jésus-Christ. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. 亲爱的神,全世界的缔造者, 生命之水的河流从你流出, 因你的恩惠我们才能分享之久。植物的果实, it will become for us our spiritual drink. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, singing glory to you in the highest heaven and on earth peace among all you favour. In the beginning, your word created the world and brought life into being. And the life was the light that overcomes darkness. And now... Your grace brings salvation to all. The world, the word becomes flesh. Your son is given to us, the firstborn of Mary. And the heavenly host sings his praise. Though born in exile at the emperor's command, he will break the rod of oppression. Though clothed this night in bands of cloth, in him we see your glory, full of grace and truth. Though laid this night in a manger, he will be seated on the throne of endless peace to rule the world in justice and righteousness, and in him all the earth shall see your salvation. Therefore, with the woman who gave you birth, with the man who took you on his shoulders, with the shepherds who found you in a feed trough, with the magi who knew of you from the silent stars, and with the aged prophets who saw in you the redemption of the world. We sing to you. Con los ángeles y arcángeles que nos envuelven, con todos los santos que nos han precedido y están a nuestro lado, con los hermanos y hermanas, al este y al oeste, así como al norte y al sur. We sing to you. Ram, ram, piyajan, kasat, kasat, avahami, mata, lok, जो आज जो यस रशम हम रो नजीक चन। We sing the hymn of unending grace. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of truth and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Who 
Blessed are you, O God of vulnerability and strength. You are the midwife of our lives who pulls us kicking into life and breathes spirit into us. Blessed is your servant Mary, and blessed is the holy child of her womb, born among us as a fragile baby, embodying both love and the need for love, and calling us to rest in you as trustingly as a tiny child. Blessed is your son Jesus, who emptied himself of power and became foolishness for our sake, Heaven's child laid in a manger, God's anointed lamb in a tomb. Hunted at birth, humiliated at death, he entered our fearful darkness so that we might enter his glorious light. Born again from the shuddering earth, he is embodied forever in his living creation and in these its fruits of bread and wine. Blessed is our brother Jesus, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, who, on the night when he was delivered over to death, took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup, this is, cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink, drink it, it to remember me. Alors, toutes les fois que nous mangeons ce pain et buvons cette coupe, nous annonçons le mystère de notre foi. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As we be so for you, we will celebrate the life when death not be pressed down. The life when Jesus dash in area people since before, before, even come dash us now. Habiendo sido hechos uno con él, y por tanto entre nosotros mismos, Ponemos ante su presencia estos regalos de pan y vino, como señal de nuestro sacrificio, de alabanza y de agradecimiento, pues aquí nos presentamos a nosotros mismos, así como nuestros cuerpos, mente y espíritu, para constituir un sacrificio continuo y santo para ti, Señor. Come and deliver in this bread and this wine the newborn life of Christ, your bodily presence placed in our hands, a wondrous gift, an awesome trust. Come, Holy Spirit, come, come, Holy Spirit, come. As you were breathed into us at our birth, Fill us with new life again in this holy meal. Encouraging, exhorting, comforting, nourishing our growth and inspiring our living. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and open our eyes to your presence that we might recognise in each new child a glimpse of the face of God, a sign of the life to come, and a call to live in peace and celebrate living together. Glory be to you, O God. Glory be to you, O God. Christ is born, sharing our fragile flesh, placing his life in our hands. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Look, Christ is risen, living water and new wine for thirsty hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. Holy things for holy people. Holy one is holy. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive. The, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Jesus, the wellspring of life, invites all who are thirsty to come to him. So come, receive freely. Let us raise our cups as one and taste the first fruits of the coming joy. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life until, until he comes. comes. Take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon you, take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Your peace. Mysterious God, you can found our expectations by meeting us where we least expect to find you, in a manger, sharing our frailty, in broken bread, healing our pain. In the holy nativity of your only son, you have taken upon yourself our humanity and summoned us to share your divinity. With trembling hearts, let us renew that scared sacred pledge together. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will, put me to doing, put me to suffering, let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, creator, redeemer and sustainer, you are, you are mine, and I am yours. May be so forever, to the glory and grace of your name. Amen. As Mary laboured to bring Christ into the world, let us make it our labour too, to bring Christ into the world wherever we go. The Lord says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. For God so loved the world that God sent God's only Son, 
that all who believe in him may not die, but have eternal life. praising God for all you have heard and seen. Renounce ungodly living and unworthy desires and take control of your life with godliness and honour. And may the God of grace increase your joy. May Christ Jesus be born as Saviour within you. And may the Spirit reveal to you the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Sisters and brothers, the Eucharist never ends. It must be lived. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen.